Welcome, everyone, uh, to the regularly scheduled public meeting at the Shreveport Caddo Parish Metropolitan Planning Commission. We are going to begin with um, our invocation. If Pastor Jackson would like to lead us in our invocation, and Mr. Andrews, to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. Stand if you wish. <coughs> Shall we pray? God, we thank you now for the privilege of another day and for the responsibility that we've been given, we pray that you would grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. We thank you for those who are serving and for those who have come. We pray now that all of the deliberation will be done in such a way that it will benefit and redound to the benefit of the citizens of Caddo and Shreveport. We ask all of this now in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Can you all hear me? Because the last couple of meetings I've been criticized for not being heard. So I'm trying to speak into the microphone today. Um, for public hearing agenda items today, if you wish to make public comments on an application, we have MPC comment slips at the speaker stand next to the podium. For future notification purposes, it's very important that you fill out a slip and drop it in the box when you come forward to speak. Please state your full name, mailing address, and zip code before addressing the board. Um, we will call each case on the agenda in order and hear first from the applicant and then those speaking in favor of the application. Keep in mind that 10 minutes will be allotted for the principal spokesperson, but only three minutes for each additional speaker. We will then hear from those wishing to speak against an application, and again, 10 minutes allotted for the principal spokesperson and three minutes for each additional speaker. Uh, then one representative of the application can come forward and speak in rebuttal if desired. After hearing comments on each case, the board will then immediately deliberate and vote on that case before moving on to the next case on our agenda. Please note that when the board is deliberating, members of the public are not permitted to comment during that time. Um, any member of the public may request a copy of the board's decisions on a particular case by contacting our office at 318-673-6480 after 1 p.m. tomorrow or by accessing our website at shreveportcaddompc.com. Uh, for consent agenda items and other agenda items not requiring a public hearing, which I don't think we have any today, public comments can be made upon request by filling out an MPC comment slip. If comments are requested for a specific agenda item, the chair will offer an opportunity for those comments prior to the commission taking action on the agenda item. All of the MPC board's zoning recommendations are submitted to either the City Council or the Parish Commission for a final decision, depending on the location of the property in question. Please note that it's your responsibility to contact the appropriate governing body about their procedures as related to the matter that you're concerned with. Copies of this document and the phone numbers to contact the governing bodies are available <coughs> on the table next to the podium and in the entryway to this room. Um, as a courtesy, please remember to silence your cell phones while the MPC board is in session. Um, we value your testimony and we appreciate your compliance with these guidelines and we really do appreciate your time and your participation in this public service today. So thank you all for being here. Madam Chairman, I have a question. Um, yes, sir. I noticed that we have one annexation. We don't normally do annexations at the MPC. It's number 18. If it's okay with the other board members, I'd like to move that to the top of the agenda if we don't have anything. Is that a motion? Yes, sir, that's a motion. Second. All right, we have a motion uh, by Mr. Colvin to reposition the annexation case, which is number C3519. Right. Um, and a second by Mr. Jackson. All those in favor? It's not on. I see, I think we're waiting on our. Just popped up. Just touch it again. Oh, see. Oh. Here we go. If you touch Boom. it, it'll start. <laughs> All right, and that motion was approved. Um, so we will start. Oh, oh yes. Let's, sorry, okay. Um, before we start our hearing, we're going to take a look at the minutes and approve our March 6, 2019 minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Second. A motion to approve by Mr. Who, who was that you, Mr. Andrews and Ms. 
Smith seconded, mm -hmm. I believe. All those in favor? <coughs> Where's he What's that? He's waiting on him. Yeah. All right. The minutes from March are approved. Okay. So moving into our scheduled public hearing, um, we are going to start by calling case number C3519, um, Shreveport UDC annexation. The applicants. Um, the MPC, actually. Um, is there anybody here um, who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Yeah, just go ahead and come up here and just state your name and your mailing address for the hey, record. I'm Melissa Flores. I'm with Blanchard Walker. I'm filling in for Tom Arsenault. And you want my mailing address? Uh, please, yeah, uh, his, either one. 333 Texas Street. Suite 700, Shreveport 71101. Okay, so do you have anything you want to say just about what's happening here? Um, I can just give you what, a little bit what's in your packet, just briefly. Um, there is an abandoned street which Progressive Bank now owns, which is just adjacent to its tract. The tract that Progressive owns is in the city limits. The abandoned street is not, and the tract on the other side of the abandoned street is within the city limits. Um, I believe we have building permits. We're just kind of getting ready to go, and we want to include this property in our subdivision plat. Okay. Adam. All right. Thank you. This is a little different. We've never done one of these, but a little different. Um, all right. Thank you very much. Thank is there you. anybody else here to speak in favor of this application? Um, anybody here to speak in opposition to this application? All right. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, motion to approve by Ms. DeMarteau and a second by Ms. Smith. <coughs> Call for the vote. All right, and that application is approved. Thank you very much. Okay. Lost my agenda. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> All right, moving on to case number SPSC 619, preliminary and final plat. Um, applicants, more and associates. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Andy Craig, more and associates, 1324 North Hearn, Shreveport 71107. I'm uh, pleased to present to you this afternoon a um, plat for Unit 1 of Tornado Bluff subdivision. It's 36 lots uh, of what will eventually be hopefully 82 lots in the subdivision. As far as we know, this first subdivision, uh, single family detached subdivision in this part of town in quite a while. Um, the uh, track wraps around the Trinity Heights Baptist Church off of Old Morningsport Road. Um, it's partially in the city, mostly in the parish. Annexation has petition has been filed. We're planning on getting completely in the city of Shreveport. And as you can see on the map, the zoning is broken up. That's the next case on your agenda to um, clean up the zoning there for all residential uh, R17. So um, I'll be glad to answer any questions if you have any. All right. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Does anybody have any questions? All right. Seeing none, you can just stay close by if you want since you're coming right back. Is there anybody else here to speak in favor of this application? Um, anyone here to speak in opposition? Okay. Board, what's your pleasure? Second. Motion to approve by Mr. Andrews. Second by Ms. DeMarteau. No discussion? No call for the vote? And that application is approved unanimously. So moving on to your next case, um, case number P919, a zoning request. 
Andy Craig, Moore and Associates, 1324 North Arm, Suite 301, Suite 4-7-11-07. And as just stated, this is the uh, to rezone the back part of the Frank's lot, uh, Frank's Foundation tract, that will be the continuation of this subdivision. And I will tell you, we're doing Unit 1, per the previous plat you just saw. We're going to be back before you pretty soon, we hope, with Unit 2. We're phasing the construction to Unit 1, and we're going to move right on into Unit 2. We hope to have all 82 lots developed by the end of the year or ever, however long it takes us weather uh, allowing. Uh, so we're hoping to have the whole thing done by this time next year. Uh, the, the church is, has been in support of the project, and uh, we've, we've just had a whole lot of support for getting this in there. And the Franks Foundation has been very particular about the developer and the builder and the size lots and units they are going to go in there because Mrs. Franks lives not too far to the east of that and they're sensitive to the church and so it's going to be a, a good quality subdivision development. All right, nice. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Craig? Or is anyone else here to speak in support of this application? Seeing none, is anyone here to speak in opposition to this application? All right, seeing none, board. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Ms. DeMarteau and a second by Mr. Andrews. No discussion. Call for the vote. And that application is approved unanimously. All right. Case number C2319, Special Use Permit and Site Plan, Applicant Vintage Design Group. Good afternoon. Welcome. My name is Trey Carter on behalf of Reliance Mechanical Contractors. Uh, we are the owner of the property at 426 and 436 North Market, and we are seeking a special use permit to operate our personal office at that location. All right. Does anyone have any questions about this use? Tell us something you'd be doing. We're actually an HVAC and plumbing and mechanical pipe welding contractor. So we you know, install and repair air conditioning units, heating units, and plumbing. We've been in business probably 40 plus years in the Texarkana market, and we moved to Shreveport about two years ago and opened a temporary office off of Joseph Avenue. And we recently purchased this property a couple months ago to establish a more permanent and a nicer office. Are you, are you going to have any kind of repair uh, activity in that in, in next to the office, or is it just clerical? It's just it's just an office. It'll it'll be an office, correct? We won't be doing any work there. No, it'll just be an office. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Dean. Uh, I think just to kind of clarify what he's asking, you will be uh, storing materials on site, both indoor and outdoor, and you will be having your trucks, your service vehicles parked within the enclosure, the enclosed space. Is yes, sir, that is correct. correct. Right. It will be used as a loading staging area. We might have equipment dropped off there one day, it might sit there for a couple of weeks, and then we might move it to a job site. Uh, as you can see by the site plan, we've done a very elaborate very nice fence that we've built around our entire property essentially everything will be stored within that fence and it's you know to our interest we're going to keep it as private and as clean and as nice looking as possible but just to clear that up there will be no repair work done at the site as he asked correct only bringing in equipment store equipment and taking out and yes sir to the appropriate sites yes sir we are, we're a subcontractor, right. so we go and work on job sites. But we may drop off equipment here or there, and our guys will park trucks and vehicles there. But we will not be working, per se, repairing anything at that physical location. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir, thank you. Any more questions? Thank you, Mr. Carter. Right, thank um, you. Is there anybody else here to speak in favor of this application? Anyone wish to speak in opposition? 
Um, all right, board, what is your pleasure? I believe there's a, there might be a minor stipulation. Motion to approve with that stipulation, Madam Chair. All right, a motion by Mr. Joseph and a second by Ms. Damarteau? Yes. Or Ms. B Ms. Smith, that was you? I can't hear who y'all are saying. All right, call for the vote. And that application is approved. Okay, next case, number C2419, a zoning request. The applicant is uh, Sartori Enterprises, LLC. Not too tall. No, it's fine, <laughs> just pull it down. Welcome. <laughs> Carolyn Sartori, 125 Suzanne, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71115. Um, I'm purchasing this property from Paul Davis, and we're requesting to go to C3. We're building a facility that it's really just office complex. We'll have hopefully a, a rental a vehicle rental at that location but not storing the vehicles there and we are in negotiation with um, a doctor hopefully to um, put his facility at that location also all right thank you mr you mr andrews you have a question Ford also Mr. Tory, um, you mentioned rental vehicles. In other words, the office rental is there, but the vehicles will be stored off-site somewhere. That's else. correct. Are we talking trucks or cars? Vehicles. Or commercial equipment? No, just via, uh, like a, a Hertz type thing. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Any other questions? No. All right, thank you, Ms. Tartori. Thank you so much. Is there anybody else here? to speak in favor of this application? Anyone here to speak in opposition? Okay, board, what is your pleasure? Oh, yes. no, oh I'm sorry, I apologize. We'll Come forward, didn't see you. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, uh, I'm Nabil Mufaj and uh, I own the C1 area right behind this. <coughs> and um, my concern is that it's very tight over there and I don't know where their access is going to be. And if they put it very close to where my driveway is, it's going to be, uh, it's going to present a danger to the area. Okay, could you just repeat your name and an and a mailing address for the record? Maybe a Mufarij, 2205 East 70th. Okay. 71105. Thank you, sorry, thanks. Pleasure. Um, does anyone want to, yes, ask can, Mr. Dean, can you give us an idea about egress and whatever with the property that? Yes, yes I can. I did contact uh, uh, Jim Ollier, who is the District 4 uh, Louisiana Department of uh, Transportation's uh, traffic engineer for Division for uh, District 4. Um, and. Uh, there are some extreme challenges with this site as far as access. Um, obviously, it would be the preference to have shared access here, but that would be the property owners at their description because it's a private driveway. Uh, so uh, when we get into the site plan review process on this, we'll be very diligently looking with the state. The state has jurisdiction here uh, because we have two state highways converging on one another at this same location. Uh, uh, this will be a challenge, and we did put that in our report, that, uh, that access will be a, a challenge for this property. Um, from a land use perspective, uh, we don't have a problem with the rezoning of the property, but we do have a challenge uh, as a team who reviews the uh, site plans to come up with a plan that will work and will be, will be safe. They will be working really closely with the state to develop such a plan. Question. Just adding to that. Uh, <laughs> Madam Chair, we do not approve a site plan without that information and those recommendations from the appropriate experts in the area of traffic engineering and so forth. So this is just uh, the initial uh, zoning application, but 
once the site plan does occur, then it will be verified that it is safe uh, for cars to in have ingress and egress from that site before the site plan is approved. Is it possible that there could be no approvable e ingress and egress option? That is a possibility. Uh, as Mr. Gene has said, and he's been in constant contact with uh, DOTD, the preferred means of access is a shared access, and that was always recommended. But in the event that that is not acceptable and cannot be agreed to, then they will have to approve whatever access is being proposed. Question. Yes, Mr. Andrews. Doctor, can a way to understand at this point that there's no kind of agreement that has been worked out between you and this particular applicant as far as coming and going from that piece of property? There has been no conversations whatsoever about shared access. Uh, I had conversations with Dr. Davis and uh, uh, he offered me the property and uh, we tried to negotiate that but we did not reach an agreement. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I'd welcome a development there, but I don't want my patients to be in danger because a bunch of elderly patients uh, coming in and uh, uh, it would be, it could be compromising their ability. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Any other questions? I'm sorry? It, and there's no hours of operations because no. I, I know of his clinic and it is a sleep clinic and they want quiet, obviously. Right, and we understand C3 is the most lenient of all uh, zoning areas. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Doctor? All right, seeing none, thank you. I appreciate, appreciate you. your input. Is there anyone else here to speak in opposition? name and address? My name is Michelle Sauls. I'm with Vintage Realty Company, Suite 200, 330 Marshall Street, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71101. Um, I'm actually the real estate agent that sold Dr. Mufarge's building along with Melissa Riddick years, about 20 plus years ago. That's been a vacant corner for all of that time. Um, Dr. Mufarge and um, Dr. Davis have tried to work together uh, I know that Dr. Mufarge has been actually uh, cutting the grass on that piece of property for the last 20 years to keep it up to property standards. I think I'm going to really just reiterate some of the issues. It's a very, very small tract of land. I'm not exactly sure. It's like eight-tenths of an acre or something like that. It is, you know, it's off of a very busy corner there where um, Jimmy Davis Highway meets uh, East 70th Street, goes into Burke Coons there. So it's a very busy corner. This driveway is going to have to be in what is the right turn lane off of East 70th going on to East Kings Highway. I think I've got the right road, East Kings Highway mm -hmm. there. So um, where the ingress and egress is going to be is really posing an issue. And I, I hear what Mr. Gene and Mr. Clark are saying, that it's going to be a DOTD issue, but it's still an issue. What is built there, yeah, um, whether it's a car rental or um, an office, you know, medical practice, just for the internal circulation that's going to be on that tract of land, if too big large of a prop building is built, how they're going to circulate, the possible impact of that. There may need to be fencing or something that's going to prevent the uh, uh, people who are on that particular property parking in, in, the, in Dr. Mufarge's property because that will be the tendency to do that because if there's not adequate parking put on that track for whatever that use is going to be. Um, the issue, you know, and the issues of hours of operation that, that have been raised are an issue. Uh, don't know that it's C3 is appropriate zoning. I ask, and I don't under know all of the you know, itemization, whether it should be C3 or C2. 
I don't know that zoning is necessarily going to deal with all these issues at that location. It's not uh, a fault or a problem necessarily being caused by the buyer. It's just the physical attributes of the property are going to be really most challenging in order <coughs> for it to be safe and be something that's a real asset to the community and not damage the um, adjacent property. All right. Thank you. Is there anybody? Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Falls? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in opposition to this application? All right. Um, right. I want to see. Offer Ms. Santori an opportunity to rebut. She would like to come forward. Sartori, sorry. Do you want me to restate um, well, name and address again? Um, no. no. <laughs> okay. Um, I understand both the sleep camp clinic and even vintage properties uh, objections. However, um, we do not plan to build a two-story facility there that will have a large amount of traffic going through. What we're planning to do is a one-story office complex, office-only complex, so that the amount of traffic coming and going is going to be small. If we're able to put our um, rental uh, company there, it will only be office only. So there's not going to be any noise traffic at all. Um, our our um, architect has told us about the issue of entrance and exit from the property. However, um, if we're able to work with uh, the sleep clinic to have dual access, that would be great. Uh, we have not had the opportunity to discuss that with him because we are in the very baby stages of having the property rezoned and going forward from there. If he's not agreeable to allowing us to have dual access there, um, there is enough room on the property entrance from 70th Street um, to build a parallel entrance there. We also plan to um, make sure that we're following all the regulations that are required from the state to the DOT to uh, building permits. And we do have a architect working on this that understands and knows the problems that are there. So the issues that were brought up are non-issues. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Mr. Mr. Um, Clark? Ms. Sartori? Yes. How are you today? Wonderful. In the event, and I don't know what the inclinations of the board may be, but in the event that the board w would be inclined to approve this application. Uh, yes we suggest that you immediately schedule a pre-application conference okay. with you and the architect that's working with you. Okay. And in that point, the, you, that architect and the staff and the other persons involved in approving the site plan would be able to sit down and discuss Correct. problems and if there are solutions. Correct. Do all of those things prior to your going into development. Absolutely. That, I agree with that 100%. <clears throat> I just wanted you to be aware of that service that provided by the MPC right. to assist you in development in the event that the rezoning is approved. Yes, yes. Ma'am, can, can, I, can I make a comment? Uh, you yes. mentioned that you're probably looking at the rental <coughs> office, a uh, car office, right? That's correct. I mean, from my point of view, the, 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 I mean, the problem there is, you know, the coming in and co coming out of the car. But see, we're going to be having an office there, and the way it is set up is all our um, vehicles are going to be warehoused, and we will be doing very similar to um, Enterprise, whereas we're 
taking the vehicle to the individual so the individual will not be coming to our location it'll be mostly just an office so, oh so there's no dropping in or picking up people no. at that location at no. all no no okay no okay like like we've said Ms. I, Tori, that that information will be dealt with in the that's correct that we're talking about all you're doing is determining whether today at the property is rezoned that's what we're requesting absolutely all we're asking right now is that you rezone so that we can take the next step Could, uh, yes Ms. um why is c3 instead of a c2 or c1 just gives us more flexibility that's all okay, I was and, Thank you. and we're looking that up, right? We figured you were about to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> that predictable. <laughs> no, wait, I, I'm looking it up right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. Madam Chairman. Yes. Any other questions from the center, uh, Mr. Colvin? Uh, so I understand <clears throat> it will not be a storefront. A customer cannot walk in this office? That's correct. We're um, going to have outside sales actually uh, working with um, businesses B2B so that they're going to the location and trying to set up accounts with them so when they're needing the vehicles right. we will bring the vehicle to but, them but but if you put up on that busy corner a hurt sign there's gonna be some people stop in and try to rent a car from you. And we uh, gotta remember that no, no we're not we're not planning on putting uh, because we want to keep it low-key we're not planning to put that type of a sign there okay uh, we just got to remember that what she plans to do is, is fine, but if she ever sells the property, whatever that seat, that zone, anybody could put anything else there. So we got to look at the zone and what's the difference on that. We're thinking that maybe the vehicle rental is how we get to the C3. Ve yes, vehicle that, rental? That, that's, that's what it is. That's, it can only be in yeah. this. So vehicle rental, meaning that it could be a rental car place someday no, no. if it was what saying is she can't get to the vehicle rental use the enclosed vehicle rental use in c2 it's there's not a pathway use. for that it has to be c3 if she wants that use that's why I'm even though she's not okay that's why she applied for the c3 but, but in the future if she doesn't own that property someone else can come and say i do want to have vehicles here to rent and we would no. have to allow it no. or she could no you gotta come back. special use permit then as long as it's enclosed mm -hmm. it's permitted if it's with outdoor display or storage it's a special use permit so if somebody comes back later and says no we want to store them on site they have to come back to you for a special use permit or even picking up and dropping off they on any c3s that. Vehicle rental without outdoor vehicle storage or display. I, I think that the, 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 the confusion is in order to do what she's requested to do, she had to have the property zone C3. And, it and, could not have been C2. It and, okay. Not a path. And that's what she's requesting to do. What I'm hearing is that she's just going to have office space, no rental cars right. going in and out. But it's enclosed. How? however that's great and maybe everybody would like that if she, when, when and if she ever sells the property it's still zone c3 so what is is rental cars what is allowed on that c3 if they wanted to make rental cars with the, where those cars were on the property they would have to come back to this board for a special use permit even if it's just dropping in and um, even if it's in a different location and they bring the car in to pick up someone and deliver the car there not to store it but just to pick the to pick the because i've seen those kind of locations when you go there they actually bring the car to that office to pick you up i'm looking at the use definition now just to give me just a moment because there is no hours of use and that could be going on night and day no and, there, and, be, and besides uh, rental car operations on c3 are there any other concerns about anything else that well that's why i was asking yeah it, it, so if there's incidental parking they come there they park that vehicle on the site that's now the one that requires a special use permit so once they begin to bring those cars to that site 
that changes the changes the use from one that's that's uh, the outdoor uh, display. So if they if they're just an office, they dispatch them. They call a warehouse and they have that car delivered. That's fine. The minute they bring begin to bring those vehicles to the site, then they're in violation of the code. So there will be no. So the city the is still yet. protected. Thank right. you. The way this reads, there will be no vehicles on the site. All vehicles will be dispatched from another location to the person that's actually Thank renting you. the car. But right. as you said, the zoning, zone, the base bridge. zoning will still be C3. C3. In what other types of uses can you refresh my memory that are C3s? It's a long list. Yeah. A long, okay, long. name some. Okay, hang on just a second. Let me go back to the matrix. Casino? <laughs> Food trucks. Food trucks. <laughs> Food trucks. <laughs> Food trucks. <laughs> my favorite. Okay, hold on just a moment. They're in alphabetical order. I'm just going to go through. Okay. Um, I can look it up if you want me to. Yes. If, but so I, I can, if, you know, yeah, if you can, I can, I can name them off public if you want me to, everything from uh, animal care facility, animal shelter, uh, art gallery, art studio, automated um, teller machine. Uh, these, I'm just reading the permitted uses right now. Body modification establishment, uh, broadcasting facility, uh, bus transfer station, um, right. but any community center, mm. community garden. I'm only in the C, right. so there's so, but any quite C3, a number of uses. Any C3 use would require a site plan approval. Right, that's what I was about to say. Which would require I mean, the Department of Transportation. Anything that goes there will have to be have a site plan so approval that will deal with the site coverage area and, and all of the issues that you're talking about now. It's not just they would just automatically be able to right. drop an animal care facility on the site. Right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, thank you for your time. Yes, thank you for, for being here. All right, board, what is your pleasure? Any discussion or after the vote? Um, my motion is to deny. Second. All right, we have a motion to deny by Mr. Andrews and a second by Mr. Colvin. Um, any discussion? Um, can I ask you why? Tell us why. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to. No, no. <laughs> well, I can see how the, for discussion, I can see how the residential zoning would not fit the current zoning. I can see that. But I, my biggest concern would be there would be no approval of an ingress or egress on that. So then I could see him not approving it. Any. Oh, no. <coughs> Anybody Can else? I speak again? No. no. Oh, we're in deliberation now. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you. We're trying but to follow I mean, the rules. I mean, if, if, if all she wants is office field, why do that kind of operation? You can just have a, just an office, you know, not necessarily for rental cars, just you know, for an motion? accountant. We did. Mm -hmm. We're in motion. We, we had a second. Okay. We're in discussion. Okay. I, I did hear. Okay. okay. Sorry. We have a motion for denial, a second, but we now work discussion. I, mean, I, I have my concerns. I don't see mm -hmm. I, I'm just wondering why, you know, if, can, I mean, office space could go on a C2. Or C1. Or a C1. But and it's C1, C2 around there. The rental car, yes. But she's just, I, I guess the problem is she requested the vehicle rental enclosed. Right. That can only go in C3, C3. and possibly uh, if the C3 is not uh, granted, it might be a deal killer. You know, if that's what she really wants. Madam Chair? Yes, sir. The medical Madam, office uh, building possibly could go there. Is, is there a way, I, I know we don't do um, certain um, kinds of exemptions like we used to, but um, is there a way to have the um, have a stipulation, have a C3 with some kind of stipulation that takes away the flexibility, or are we just left with doing C3 and that's pretty much it? You will be zoning the property C3, and the rights that are associated with three. C3 comes with that recommendation for approval. Excuse me. <coughs> Madam Chairman? Yes, sir. yes sir. But awesome. Alan, if she had wanted an office space, and asked for office space, it could have been a C1, 
and then they could have done their outside sales out of it. But when you ask for car rental, that puts it in another class. So in my opinion, it should have asked for an office space and done what they want to do, but really she wants to leave that open because she said she wanted the higher rating, she wanted the C3. So that's what we're everybody's concerned about is that higher rating. But and, and I continue to stress that even with the C3 zoning, uh, any use that's allowed on that site will have to go through site plan approval, and you know you can mitigate uh, any negative impact as a result, and possibly even the uh, shared access can be accomplished uh, if that's denied by DOTD for a separate care cut by them. Mr. Jean. Yes, I, I just wanted to clarify for the board, um, the, the three uses that we were told was an office, a medical office, and then the rental office. Uh, the two other uses would be allowed in both C1 and C2. Okay, just to clarify. It's Call for the vote. All right, no further discussion? Um, no. All right, we'll call for the vote, and it would be the motion is to deny. So if you vote yes, you are denying the application. Just to clarify. All right, and the motion to deny <laughs> has been approved. approved. <laughs> right. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, Next case is number C25-19. Oh. Can you, can you, you can walk up and talk to the director. Sorry, thank you. Um, case number C25-19, it's a zoning request. The applicant is uh, Exie and Kim Angeletti, is that correct? Mm -hmm. right. Hi, my name is Exie Angeletti and I'm requesting um, uh, zoning change from a daycare to a single or multiple family residence. Oh, and the address is 1925 Cross Lake, and that's on the corner of Cross Lake and Lakeshore in the city of Shreveport. Okay, and can you state your mailing address? Uh, my mailing address is 225 North Cross Street, Bolger City, Louisiana, 71111. All right, thank you. And did you say that you're requesting the zoning change for a residential purpose? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, does anybody have any questions for Ms. Angeletti about her use <coughs> plans? Uh, Ms. An Mr. Andrews? Can you tell us a little bit about what you plan to do um, with that property again? In oh, okay. Um, it's going to be a single family resident or it would be a resident where I would um, rent out the, the rooms to uh, like students or you know somebody that need a place to live that can't afford a whole house. Or since it's multiple and, and we also was thinking about maybe a, a, a B and B resident that's a uh, bath and breakfast because uh, he, he told us that we could do that if we wanted to do that also. All right, any Thank other you. questions for Ms. Angeletti? Mr. Clark. So you are, you are requesting uh, approval for a single residential dwelling. Yes. For, or for a bed and breakfast. Uh, bed and breakfast, right. yes, sir. And, that, and those were the, the uses, if, if we're understanding correctly, that you discussed with staff, and those were the uses that you came up with that were agreeable yes. to you. All right, any other questions? All right, seeing none, thank you, Ms. Angeletti. Okay. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor? Uh, question, especially. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you familiar Mr. with what the staff recommended, ma'am? Uh, not at this point, no. The staff recommended what I just shared with you that oh. it be approved for a single residential okay. dwelling or a bed and breakfast. Yes, sir. And it was my understanding that they discussed that yes. with you. Yes, they did. Your agreement. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. We want to make sure you understand what's been the multi-family residential deal comes off the table if it's a single family. You understand what's being said? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this application? Uh, anyone here to speak in opposition? All right. Um, board, what is your pleasure? Second. So is this a move? Um, to deny the original request for an R2 and, and to approve instead an alternative R17 single family residential? Yes, that was having The yeah. applicant having consented that's to that? Yeah, All right, so that motion was made by Mr. Joseph, correct? No, Jackson. Oh, Mr. Jackson, I can't hear, <laughs> sorry. And second by Ms. Demarteau. <laughs> I got more added, Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hearing it. We'll call for the vote. And that alternative application is um, approved. And next case. Number C2619, a special use permit and site plan, and the applicant is 2106 Fairfield, LLC. Uh, Ryan Estes here on the behalf of R Raylene Associates, uh, uh, 4913 Shed Road, Bossier City, Louisiana, 71111. Here on behalf of the developer um, for a special use permit at 2106 Fairfield Avenue. And do you want to just tell the board what that use would be, just briefly? Well, they're, they're, they've renovated in, uh, I guess, a historic Fairfield Avenue uh, residence and are turning it into a law office, uh, similar to uh, the one directly to the south of the site. I don't know what law office that is, but it's, it's the big one right there on the south mm -hmm. at the corner. <laughs> we know which one it is. Um, mm -hmm. All right? That's me. <laughs> yes. He can say that on the record. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Estes. Does anybody have any questions? Mr. Estes? Nah. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this application? Anyone here to speak in opposition? All right, um, board, what is your pleasure? So moved. Second. All right, a motion to approve by Ms. Smith and a second by Ms. DeMarteau. And there's, there's no stipulation on this, correct? All there's right. three stipulations on yeah. I think the, the staff is recommending um, that there be no more than three law offices allowed and with that the it's, yes, oh, with steps. yes so is the motion with the steps mm -hmm. okay motion to approve with the staff recommended stipulations and second by Ms. Mm -hmm. Um all right call for the vote All right, that application is approved. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Next case, number C. What? What? Uh, Ms. Smith, motion to approve the nation vote against it. Did you mean to vote against it? I voted. Oh, I did? I know. Is that an error? Yes, it is. I voted yes. I was thinking. I voted for it. Well, tell her that the. Let the record reflect. Let the record reflect, please. Thank you. So that was a unanimous approval yeah. then, okay. for the record? Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, I no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's easy to do that. They're very close together. Oh, not with my friend. <laughs> All right. So next application, number C2719, a zoning request. The applicant is Maker's Design. Ward Bryant, 957 Ratcliffe, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71104. Welcome. Can you tell us about your application? Okay. Uh, it's mostly just an industrial area. It's not being used for anything. Just trying to get it rezoned to be used to renovate the interior of the space for a brewery. All right. So this is actually a down zoning. Okay. Is there anything, any questions? 
from Mr. Ms. An Mr. Andrews? Now you know you're going to tell us a little yeah. bit. You can't just... <laughs> <laughs> it's a brewery. This is very casual. It's, um, <laughs> anyway. it, well, the whole thing is a bit more complicated than that because there's about three or four different lots onto it. Uh, but the fact that it's all zone industrial doesn't actually allow for the brewery to be used. So, like I said, we have to, have to actually down zone it to all be C4 currently. And there is parts that are I2, parts that are C3. We're all just combining it all to one thing right now. Uh, and the idea is to renovate it. And it is a local brewery. It just does not have a location. Um, the name is the Seventh Tap Brewery. And the idea is they're ready to go. Just need to start the paperwork on it. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Bryant? No. All right, seeing none, thank you very much. Is anyone else here to speak in support of this application? Uh, anyone here to speak in opposition to this application? Um, and board, what is your pleasure looking at the stipulation for the staff recommendation if you no, care to? All right. Motion to approve with stipulations by Mr. Andrews and second. Second. Second by Mr. Jackson. Any discussion? Call for the vote. All right. That application is approved. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. We had an abstention uh, on oh. that case. Is that Mr. Uh, I own the property across the street. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Is that necessary to? Yes. Okay. If you have standing, you need to say what? Yes. If you don't know, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Rules. <laughs> you move to the now, you don't have to. Rules. All righty. <laughs> uh, next case. Number C2819, a special use permit and site plan, and the applicant is the Larson family LP. How are y'all? I'm Kevin Bryan, Kevin Bryan Architects, 712 Texas Street, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71101. I'm here on behalf of the Larson family LP. The development group that is wanting to build a distillery in downtown Shreveport. And to the best of my knowledge, I think this might be the first, maybe second, but I think it might be the first distillery being built in our area uh, ever, I think. So um, the uh, property is uh, in downtown, the corner of Cotton and Louisiana Street, uh, approximately. It's in the D1AC zoning district. And uh, the proposed name of the facility is Every Man a King. It is a new standalone facility uh, proposed to be built at 708 Cotton Street, approximately 3,000 square feet, single story building, sort of a two story volume because of the height requirement of some of the distillation equipment. But approximately 2,000 square feet of the facility would be dedicated to distillation. About 1,000 square feet would be dedicated to um, tasting room, bathrooms, gift shop, prep areas, things like that. The uh, development includes a courtyard uh, as part of the 708 uh, lot. The overall project also includes acquisition of the Arlington Hotel, which is the um, facility that is currently self-demolishing due to neglect. Um, the, uh, the entire project includes renovation of the Arlington Hotel, which is a three-story structure. It, has, uh, it will, as proposed, have a restaurant and a bar on the ground floor. It'll have an event space on the second floor. Third floor is up in the air right now. It'll probably just be shell space until they either find a tenant or develop it for themselves. But the idea is that the distillery gets built as a new standalone building. The Arlington Hotel gets renovated into event space and they share a courtyard that kind of connects the two. There are two separate buildings, two separate properties. The distillery will not be attached to the Arlington. Um, but the, the reason I'm here is to, I guess, ask for the uh, permission for the or the special use permit to to allow a distillery to be built uh, at this location. I'm here to All answer right. any questions any about questions the project. Just one question. Would Andrews? you state the proposed name again, please? Every man a king. He would be a long reference. Every woman a king. That's his next op. Uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the third one. Okay. All right. Any other questions, Mr. Ryan? 
That's right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Anyone else here to speak in favor of this application? Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Hey. Liz Swain, 416 Cotton. And uh, the Downtown Development Authority, Downtown Shreveport Development Corporation, very supportive of this ask this afternoon. We absolutely welcome the Larson Family Project to downtown for a number of reasons. We absolutely also believe that their plans complement everything around that area, as well as bring, <coughs> pardon me, a needed attraction to downtown and to our city as a whole. Over the past five years, I have dealt with a number of developers who have looked at this property and have been unable, for various reasons, to, to bring it to fruition. They've either um, not had the capital, the imagination, or the ability to do it. And we are very excited that the Larson Family Project seems to have all three of those things and more. Uh, this is something that is going to be an, an amenity and an attraction to our downtown and our city. And I would absolutely encourage you, if you will, to support it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, can I ask here? a question? Yes, absolutely. Mr. So you're gonna. I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so you're gonna have like the tanks. You know, the, the whole the distillery process is gonna be done down there, right? As I understand it, yes, they are building a freestanding building that will be the distillery building, and the architect is here, so can answer additional of those questions. So that will be done on site. And so, so the. You can't uh, ask. Uh, can I ask a question? Sure. Kevin? You can, uh, he cannot come by. Oh, so sorry. Yeah, no, he cannot I come will. by. Can I ask you a, a question regarding that? So if it, this gets approved, obviously there's going to be, uh, you know, the city planning and all the team, you know, making sure like the, like the fumes from the vapor and everything that comes out of the, the steel, the stealing alcohol that is not hazardous for the that will for be the all properly checked by the proper authorities to ensure that the process that they're using is in compliance with the EQ requirements and so forth. I mean it sounds like a very exciting project. I just wanna make sure because there's a lot of hazards related to the stealing alcohol. Hello, what? Gases. Gases and oh, oh. we would not be supportive of uh, gas immunes, immunes into the air, anything of that nature, and make sure that it's properly approved before they're erect or constructed to the distilleries. There are a number of distilleries that have been built in cities around the country and heavily populated in very dense areas, and we understand that there are things that can be done to prevent any issues such as what you're talking about. Okay. I mean, we, we need places in downtown to, you know, to, to for the economy, but I just want to make sure that, you know, the due diligence and everything re mm -hmm. regarding all these hazards right. is, you know, takes place. We'll take care of it, sir. I would just like to say, Liz, proud of downtown. Thank you, Miss Bessie. thank you for all of your hard work, your team. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Ms. Swain? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Anyone else here to speak in support of this application? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Wendy Ben Scotter. I'm the executive director of Shreveport Common. That's 801 Crockett Street, Suite 205, 71105. Oh, excuse me, 71101. And I'm here today representing the Shreveport Common Board of Directors to say that we fully support the distillery to be operating at 708 Cotton Street. This property is located in the nine block area of Shreveport Common. Uh, for many of you, you remember that the MPC approved the plans for Shreveport Common to be an overlay of the nine block area. And this is a pinnacle corner. It's, you drive down the street of Louisiana and Cotton Street, it has a nice name to it, the Louisiana Cotton Exchange, but the developers in that area have had a very difficult time opening their businesses because of the Arlington Hotel and the surrounding blight. But with the city of Shreveport putting in new streets and, and lights and the developers coming together, 
They have really created a lot of momentum in the area, and they are all standing by, those adjacent property owners, waiting for this project to happen, including the Fairmont Tower. So uh, this area, you know, needs a bold, transformational project. It does. The Arlington needs that, and this area needs that. And this is just the unique, creative project that the Shreveport Common Vision Plan had hoped for. So we hope you will partner with us in revitalizing the area by approving this request today. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Vinscotter. Any questions for Ms. Vinscotter? All right. Thank you. Anyone else here to speak in support of this application? All right. Seeing none, anyone here to speak in opposition to this application? All right. Uh, board, what is your pleasure? I will note that the staff has uh, suggested a stipulation that the applicant comply with landscaping <laughs> irrigation and lighting plans. So motion to approve by Mr. Andrews and a second by Ms. Second. Ms. Smith. We'll call for the vote. <laughs> the application is approved. All right, thank you. Next case is number C2919. It's a zoning request. Um, the applicant is Tim Brandon Architecture. Lisa Frontara with Tim Brandon Architecture. Address is 2250 Hospital Drive, Suite 116 in Bossier City, 71111. Okay. At the time this uh, building was purchased, the property was on B1. And at that time, we were approved, our building was approved for use within that zone. The project was put on hold, and in the meantime, the codes changed, um, and therefore, we need to apply for a special use permit now. But uh, I'm open for any questions you may have. Do you want to just describe what use you're applying for? Uh, it's shelter housing is the use we're applying for. We're okay. renovating a portion of the first floor. Due to limited funding, we can't renovate the entire building at this time. So we're renovating as much as we can to comply with all local codes, fire marshal, um, and we're uh, fully renovating a portion of the first floor for the shelter housing. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Sure. There was a stipulation uh, with respect to the submittal of a, a landscape plan. Uh, you, you guys are a lighting plan, looks like an irrigation plan and drainage plan, and you guys are comfortable with that? Yes, we'll be submitting all of that so that we can get the final permit for the property. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this application? I can't tell, I guess I'm not. No. Okay. Anyone here to speak in opposition to this application? Granger Harris, 1513 Line Avenue, Suite 345. I actually don't oppose the, the granting of this. I wanted to see if I could get a clarification, maybe by way of the stipulation. Um, there were two things that I know in the site plan or in the uh, staff package, the, it looks like the parking area is supposed to be either repaved or concreted with a um, non-permeable uh, membrane. Um, wanted to check on that and then a couple of the other neighbors had reached out to me today they had been under the impression speaking with the contractor that's been working on the site that a privacy fence was going to be built along the I think I think it's the south the two borders that aren't bordering bordered by the street I think that's the south border and the west border of the property but when I looked at the site plan those didn't show up I uh, wanted to see if we could get a stipulation on both of those that before a CO get granted those are take do take place because I know having been a landlord to social services projects before, especially residential ones, it's hard. No one wants to tell them afterwards when funds are tight that you have to be able to comply with this. Later on, social services organizations' funds are always tight. We totally understand that sometimes you have to stage the project, but those are things that um, we felt as the neighbors, uh, you know, would be taken care of and I think had been agreed to already. We wouldn't ask for anything that was adding to their cost or to have them not be approved for their project. Uh, Mr. Clark, would this be a question for you or for the planner or for Mr. Jean? Uh, We're looking to see if a privacy fence is required. Uh, I don't know if one was required. I don't see it anywhere in the staff report that it's part of the site plan that it would be provided. 
Yes, sir, we understand. That's the reason that I came today is because I, it, well, I couldn't find any reason that had previously stated that it was required. Uh, the other neighbors didn't come today, hadn't planned to come because they were already of the understanding that it was being done voluntarily as part of the project. If uh, it is required that it will be required, we will ensure that it's done. If it's not required, as you well know, it would be at the option of the uh, I, I understand. They had asked me to appear and ask if they, if the project manager would be one to agree to that as a stipulation. And we could ask that once she comes back up. Understood. It's not required. It's right. A now, Madam Chair. I think that the concerns for the uh, for the other neighbors were. It looks like in the report, the expectation is going to be that a majority to all of the people who are. Uh, residing there will not be driving and so it's not going to be a matter of people leaving it's some people about of walking in and out of the facility and there's already a pretty big issue there of people just cutting through there's a lot of vacant lots around that area and so a lot of times people will just walk right across an area won't hit the sidewalk um, at all and so I think that was where their concern came from um, so are these neighbors that are adjacent to this property or across Centenary on the other side adjacent um, okay. so on one, the same there's block. like a hospital on one side which that's is not correct. residential that's correct is that one of them that is okay. okay all right so the hospital is concerned about the hospital uh no i spoke with the owner of the bakery that's uh that's right next door i know they spoke today and had planned to come and when he reached out to me he said well he had talked to the contractor that was out there and that was the what he got his comfort level from was that that wasn't there i i didn't speak to the contractor myself that was his rep you know his representation to me if it's already been agreed that they're going to do that, then that's great. If not, I'm not asking the, the board to put that on top of them if that's not something they were willing to do. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Um, from Mr. Harris, sorry. Any questions? No. Nope. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else here to speak in opposition to this application? Um, Dana Johnson, 119 Talafiero Drive, Shreveport 71101. I'm not clear as to what kind of housing shelter this is, if it's a rehabilitation such as Teen Challenge or something like that, or if it's a, a housing assistance like um, temporary housing assistance like the Shreveport Mission is, or what? Can she answer that question? No. Yeah, as far as shelter housing, it's just not a really good area for um, people trying to get a fresh start or anything like that. I mean, there's gunshots every night. There's, it's a drug active neighborhood. It's a, uh, for lack of a better word, there are a lot of um, people who submit their cells in exchange for drugs. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of activity in that area that I don't think is beneficial to people in a shelter and if they decide to not be a part of that shelter anymore and they're out walking the streets again or homeless again they're being placed in the absolute worst area of Highland to be in, in that situation and they're more susceptible to being tempted by the drugs and the, the things in that area it's a really bad area it's between two projects there's a project north and south across the street and I just don't think it's a good place for shelter housing. Unless it is a place that is run by, you know, like a Teen Challenge or a rehabilitation. You know, I know how Teen Challenge operates. And, uh, you know, they, they test their people that stay there and drug test them, things like that. So, you know, what, what type of um, support for the homeless or whatever they're being housed for is there to be sure that they're not partaking in drugs. I know the Shreveport Family Mission, you take drug test. You know, when you go out to work, you come home, you take drug test. <laughs> you know, so what type of things like that are in place? So let, let me just let, let me just say um, what, what the extent to which we've been um, apprised of this, um, they are aware of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, none of the people, as I can appreciate it, who will be coming there are coming from any environment that will make them vulnerable to the current environment. Okay. Um, and um, they are fully aware of what it is, and they feel that uh, the neighborhood facility, as they will restructure uh, it, will be compatible 
with okay. not what's happening in that environment, but what their need is for that building. Okay. And so um, they are very much, as I appreciate it, aware of that, but don't feel their uh, clientele to be vulnerable to that kind of situation. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is anyone else here to speak in opposition to this application? All right. Seeing none. Uh, well, I, yeah, we've, we've already passed that point, but I can invite um, a representative to come back and, and rebut. Um, it can be the choice of the applicant who comes back to, to do a rebuttal. You don't have to. Yeah, you're not required, but. I think the answer, uh, I think it was Mr. Andrews, I couldn't see. Oh, uh, oh Mr. Jackson, I think his uh, I answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think his answer was adequate that uh, we're fully aware of that and that the people that are going to be housed there are not susceptible to the things that were brought up. Absolutely, you know, important things to think about, but uh, they're not going to be in danger or uh, vulnerable to those types of things that we're concerned. Do you have any any knowledge about the fence or the or the wall? Oh, that? the fence. It's not required. It's not in our current construction doc, uh, construction documents. Uh, the owner would ultimately like to put a fence in, but we don't want to be uh, denied certificate of occupancy and waiting for that. But that is the plan in the future. But it's not a part of the current construction documents. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> All right, board, what is your pleasure? Uh, chair, motion to approve. Second. second. Motion, motion to approve the steps by uh, Mr. Andrews, second by Mr. Marteau. Any discussion? Call for the vote, gentlemen. And that application is approved, I think. Yes, yes, it was quickly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. The next application is, or the next case is case number C3019. It's a zoning request. The applicant is Quick Trip Corporation. Good evening, Commission members. My name is John Pimentel. Address is 1120 North Industrial Boulevard in Euless, Texas, 76039. And I'm with your, your name again, you stuck so fast. That's all right, John Pimentel. Okay, thank you. And I'm with Quick Trip Corporation. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to consider our case today. Uh, we're excited about our first potential site in uh, not only the city, but the state of Louisiana. <laughs> um, we're, uh, we are hoping to rezone today from a C3 to uh, I1, and just for it to accommodate our truck fueling use. Um, it's, although the existing site on the northern portion is an uh, existing travel center, it's my understanding that this probably was probably put in place prior to the zoning change. That I'd like to answer any questions you may have. Any questions, Mr. Mattel? Uh, nope. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this application? Anyone to speak in opposition? All right. Board, what is your pleasure? So moved. Second. Uh, motion to approve um, by Mr. Jackson, a second by Mr. Andrews. For the vote. And the application is approved. Thank you very much. Moving on along, case number P819. It's a zoning request. The applicant is Word of Grant LLC. Hi. Hello. Um, Sonia Grigsby representing Words of Grant, LLC, 400 Travis Street, Suite 1811, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71101. A request for an RA zoning tract to an RMHS. Um, the location is 77491 Mac Road. We purchased uh, three lots of the subdivision, 22, 23, and 24 of Pine Hill Park. The total acreage is 1.5 acres. It's currently zoned as RA, and it is our wish if we can get rezoned to RMHS to resubdivide the three lots to add two additional manufactured homes. All right, 
Thank you. Any questions um, from Ms. Grigsby? Uh, Mr. Jean? Yeah, I just want to clarify. We, you just do simple math and, and, and say that the, the lot's going to be at half acre in size. Is that is that what your intent is? To be nothing any smaller than half an acre? Yes, they will be similar in size to the, the three lots, the way they are on the subdivision, the existing home doesn't allow us to use those existing lines. Right. So we would have to resubdivide, but they will be equally divided. Okay. And the, the lots, the three lots that will be subdivided will be very similar in size to the R17 or even a little bit larger that are directly across the street. Okay, thank you. All right, any more questions? All right, thanks, Ms. Grigsby. Anyone else here to speak in favor of this application? Anyone here to speak in opposition to this application? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I apologize, I'm pollen. Okay. Um, and I have, I, I've written my information, so I'm going to read it so that I don't forget the stuff. So right, I also have props. You can just start out with your name and mailing address. That's I great. sure will. My name is Brenda Bryant. My address is 5972 Acorn Street, Shreveport, 71107. Okay. Um, I've lived at this residence for 24 years. During these 24 years, I've seen a lot of changes, but the neighborhood remained a quiet rural area, which is what it was zoned to be many years ago. I'm strongly opposed to the rezoning of the, of the 7749 Womack property. When the property was zoned years ago, it was obviously never designed to be for a trailer park, but was for property owners to have a sense of country feeling and rural living. Our zoning of RA was so we could have a healthy amount of property for our dwelling and to raise our family in a country surrounding without the hustle and bustle of the city. Under no circumstances should anyone be able to put a trailer park in the middle of an existing neighborhood. It would be different if the trailer park were already there and you built houses around it, but certainly not forcing a trailer park down the throats of homeowners and property owners that have already been there. Not one of you most likely would tolerate this being done to you or in your immediate neighborhood. I have a few pictures that I want to show you, and as soon as I find them, of what is being proposed, and in reality it's what's already happened. These are the manufactured homes that, uh, that have been brought in. That's one of them. And quite obviously, in my opinion, that's not a manufactured home. Those are all the old 10 trailers that we used to have. Um, the application says that he plans to bring in two additional trailers, but in reality, you can see they're already there. He said he was going to paint them, make, build a porch, make everything nice and pretty. But he has painted them. He has dug a septic system. Water lines have been run. Uh, applications for, for uh, electricity and water, to my knowledge, have not been done. I've talked to the water people, and I've talked to the electric people. Um, he, he did do cosmetic things, so now he has, he has painted them, and they're all the same color, painted the steps all the same color, so everything is, is matching that way. Um, he's put skirting around it, and so everything has already been done. Um, with the septic system or, the, or the, the tank or whatever it is, I know I saw one tank being buried. There's an existing trailer that has like a Cajun air, and I don't know if it's a Cajun air, but it has something like that already on there, and that's fine. But when you brought the other two trailers in, you have a, you have a tank that was buried and lines that were run. And I, I know that that's not legal to have one, one tank for two trailers. So to give you a little bit of history, roughly six to eight months ago, the property was cleared and the big, the big septic tank was going to be buried. Um, he then told me he was going to put a couple more trailers or a couple more houses on the property. I contacted the zoning commission. They had somebody go out and they sent him a letter. Well, the work stopped, so I thought everything was, was okay. Somewhere around the beginning of January, it was a, a Saturday evening, all of a sudden noises started happening late in the evening. We looked outside and there was a, one of the trailers being brought in. Well, that obviously brought concern. A little bit later, noises happened again, and the second trailer was being brought in. You know, that again is, is you see what they are, okay? So I talked to the zoning people. I called them on the Monday. Um, they sent an inspector out on January the 14th, and it was determined that he was not in compliance. They mailed him a letter on the 17th. It was my understanding that no additional work could be done until things were done properly. 
So day by day, the work still continued. I called the zoning commission back, and I was told the inspector went back out on the February the 4th. He found that he was still continuing to work and that he would be issued a final letter on February the 13th, and the next day it would be turned over to the attorney that would then take the case. The day after that is when we got our zoning letter where he had come in and filed for his application. Um, it, it's obvious everything was being done prior to any kind of approvals for anything. So, you know, obviously that in itself is not right. But just so y'all know, there are multiple reasons why this zoning shouldn't change or shouldn't happen. The most obvious reason is, of course, the property values decrease. If you have an existing neighborhood that's been there for years and has been zoned like it is, yes, it is RA, and across the street it is single family dwelling. You know, and with those dwellings, those are houses. Those are not trailers that are on that side, on the, ex the ex exact side. Now, there are a couple of trailers up the hill, but they're all on one property. You know, I mean, each, each has their own property. But the decrease in your values obviously are going to happen. So the people that have just purchased land and just purchased a house, theirs is going to immediately go down because they weren't aware this was going to happen. For anybody that is looking to sell, you're going to have those values starting to go down and making it harder to sell their houses because they're living across from this. Okay? And for those of us like myself that has been there for 24 years, we're going to immediately watch our, our prices in our homes decrease and in the standards that may happen in the neighborhood. <coughs> Excuse me. Our neighborhood is well aware of what happens when a trailer park is put in, into, the, into this stuff, whether it's brought in legally or illegally. What I'm referring to, and some of y'all may be familiar with this family, the Lawler family out in North Shreveport put in four to five low-income trailers on Acorn Street, which is right, just right down the street. Then they put an existing four trailers in on Linda Lane. So that cross of Linda Lane and Acorn Street began to see a lot of activity. You know, this was done where they put four houses in, stacked them up on top of each other, and across the, down and across, they put four more in that were going long ways, okay? This was done in mid-2015. After this point, the sheriff's office became a, a, a fixture in our neighborhood. These were rental properties. They were, they were rental properties that were uh, all bills paid rental properties. Um, I have sheriff's reports that just kind of show the dispatch calls, not counting the narcotics calls that were called out because I, I just fr frankly ran out of time. But as an example, <coughs> excuse me, like I said, these came in in, 2015, in two, mid 2015. So if you take January of 15, we had a traffic stop. Okay. Trailers were moved in June the 25th of 2015. At, the, at this crossing or one of these houses, a burglary. July of 2015, you had loose livestock. That's not a big deal. You had what? Can you loose livestock. Okay. Not a problem. September of 2015, suspicious person. October of 2015, a shooter at large. N November of 2015, another traffic stop. November of 2015, execution of a warrant. December of 2015, burglary. We're now going into January. January of 16, suspicious person. January of 16, disturbance. February of 16, a traffic stop. February of 16, <coughs> suspicious circumstances. March of 16, property damage. March of 16, a shooter at large, excuse me. April of 16, a welfare concern. April of 16, a suspicious circumstance. June of 16, a trespasser. Now, July, I mean, yeah, July 30th of 16, a disturbance. Other circumstances happened, and these houses were made to be gotten rid of. People were made to move, and the houses were made to be gotten rid of. So, August the 6th of 2016, these houses were all sold at Lawler Auction. After the houses were sold, August of 16, this is what we've had. August of 16, we had a, a motorist assistance. July of 17, we had an execution of a warrant. February of 18, we had a juvenile complaint. These are the only three incidences that have ha happened after the trailers were made to be moved. So that is another big reason why we know this type of stuff happens because we just lived it. <coughs> Excuse me. According to the sheriff's office, they would come out and we would go talk to them. The drugs would be there, the meth, they were, we were la they were laughing because our area was known as a meth lab. 
I personally would see cars stop in the middle of the night, stopping in, in one of the ditch hills where the cars are. Late at night, cars would stop, lights would turn off, another car would come and meet. They'd stay there for a couple of minutes and then all of a sudden things would disappear. People would walk in the neighborhoods all hours of the night, dogs would go crazy. You know, I personally would see them go around the circle. I would watch them do. People would be in the woods across the street. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I'm a little uneasy walking up to somebody in the middle of the night asking them to, to vacate my woods because I own a portion of that. So, <coughs> excuse me, if this lot is allowed to be rezoned, or spot zoned, whatever it's called, to a manufactured home subdivision. First off, you see these are not manufactured homes. You know, in reality, it's a trailer park. It would not only be doing the property owners and the voters of this area a, dis a disservice, it would make us be forced to have our property values decreased. I have a petition signed by all but two, no, excuse me, three of the people in this neighborhood and, and actually additional people that this will directly affect. And the three people that didn't sign it, one of them is it's a house for sale, so nobody lives there. The other one is I went to the house, the lady told me, um, I don't have time to talk. I need to go take care of my child and cook supper. And the third one works for a glass company or owns a glass company, I'm not real sure which, and it's a direct thing because he's a customer of hers <coughs> at the glass company, so she didn't want to get involved. So, you know, this alone between the between the <coughs> sheriff's calls and the and the zoning should be enough to surely reject it, re, you know, take away this, this, reject this, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You know, it, it's not fair to us as property owners, you know, to take one acre and a half out of all of this land and make it be a trailer park. All right. Thank you, Ms. Bryant. You I betcha. Thank it. you for your time. Up, yes. Um, um, I have one question just for the staff. If, how would this not, just for argument's sake, how would this not be spot zoning in this particular out. The request is for residential mobile home park, which would allow for uh, manufactured housing and traditional housing. It's, it's in the middle of residential agriculture. There's no other. I'm just wondering how, because she mentioned, she, she's arguing this could be spot zoning, and I wanted y'all to address that. The, the residential agriculture zoning would allow, because it's in excess of an acre, would allow for a manufactured home by right. As long as that property was an but acre. As long as the property was an acre. Okay, but the MHS allows for smaller subdivided. The MHS would allow for them to subdivide it into three lots of smaller lots. What's this? What's the minimum lot size allowed under an MHS? 6,000 square feet. So, yeah. so how many of those would fit on, a, on an acre? I don't know. 43,000 an acre. I'm sorry? 43,000 in one acre. So, so like 43 seven. divided by six. Yeah. Okay, so like seven, you could put seven mobile homes if we change the zoning. That would be a, that would be a mobile home park. They are and that would be allowed. Subdividing. They're doing a subdivision, not a mobile home park. Okay, but would they be allowed to do a park if they change their minds? They would have to meet the requirements of a mobile home park. Right. What they're asking for is to subdivide the property into three lots to allow for the three manufactured housing houses that, that they have there now. Okay. Okay, thank Which you. the three, excuse me, are exactly it, are on the front half of the mobile home. There's a, there's a shop. And so it's really on the front three quarters of an acre. Okay. All so three. Does anyone else have, have any questions? What they have now uh, is mm -hmm. in compliance or not in compliance? Not in compliance. No, no. They're trying no. to gain compliance. They're okay. trying to get compliance. Uh, th that's why they're trying to get the property rezoned for a mobile home park subdivision and have the, the lot sizes. And Mr. Jean is looking up some additional stuff. They have the lot sizes that uh, and the division that's required to have the three mobile homes where they are now. So if it wasn't approved, they couldn't put any more. Uh, put one. Manufa they could put one manufactured home. And, and then that would require them removing the other two. Okay. Now, uh, please, can you refresh my mind? The difference between a trailer and a manufactured home is that you have the foundation, right? That you have, that the, the, that the homes are being somehow uh, installed on top a of. A manufactured home is, is 
a manufactured home, whether it is a a single wide manufactured home or a double wide manufactured home. Uh, sometimes they're referred to as trailers, unfortunately, but it is a manufactured home, and and it does not matter if it's they're all on axles, and they don't meet the international building code. They meet another. They meet the HUD building code, and that's the difference between them and traditional houses. Okay, so there's, I mean, there are manufactured homes. They are manufactured homes because they're manufactured in a factory. Okay. And then delivered on an axle to a location. Okay, and the only difference between being movable or not is whether or not they are installed, you know, like to the ground, like with a foundation or right. not, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Which they, these don't, uh, based on the pictures, right? In all likelihood, these are on axles and uh, will remain on axles, and that's why they're being properly skirted, if approved. Uh, I'm just giving you the information of about how it becomes legal. Okay. Just to clarify for my, um, if, if, we, if the board decides not to approve, they could still have one manufactured home on the lot. Correct. Thank you. And there was one, to my understanding, uh, and then they, at a later time, brought in two additional manufactured homes. Okay, thank you. And that's why they're here now. Okay. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there anyone else here to speak? And I'm oh, uh, sorry, Mr. Jean. Yes, I'd, I'd just like to clarify that what we're talking about here is a is a manufactured home subdivision, which means these properties must be divided into separate lots. So you'll have a subdivision that will come back as a part of this, if this is approved, that will show those lots divided. The mobile home park does not require the division of land. So that's the major differences between those two districts. But and there's and the, uh, Mr. Clark no was correct that the square footage requirement for this district is uh, a minimum of 6,000 square feet. <coughs> Which is uh, small. But they would still have to come, yes, but they, they would still be coming in front of this board for approval of the actual plat. We, we cannot administratively approve a three lot subdivision. It would have to come back to this board. But and that's the important part, part of the thing to understand that before they could get the subdivision, they had to get the proper zoning for the manufactured home subdivision. Which is what they're trying to do today. Which is what they're doing today. If this is approved, then they will come back, as Mr. Jean has alluded to, to get the subdivision. And if it's not approved, they have to remove some of them. Right. <coughs> and is there any other RMHS around that area? I don't see it. I don't either. That I don't know. Oh, I don't, right. I don't okay. see any. I don't think there is any. Of, okay. That, that the, the reality is that there are mobile homes in the subdivision. In all likelihood, they were at, uh, in a time when that they were on an acre or more of, lot of land. But we've sort of looked around and there are mobile homes in the immediate area. But, but not on but the not 6,003 6, square foot right. lots. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. All right, is there anyone else here to speak in opposition to this application? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can bring her with you. Sure, bring her with you. <laughs> she wants civic engagement. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Trina Covey. I live at 7822 Walmart Road, and I'm not in favor of this. I've lived there 30 years. Blanchard, where we live, is considered not in the city limits. So usually when something comes in, then they slide the rest in. I did not get a letter to this. I was told by a neighbor. Um, <laughs> they were brought in at night. They were not brought in during the day. They slid them kind of in during dark. And Blanchard is now starting to build up. We're starting to get new businesses. I do want the value of my home to go up. This is down the street, across the street, directly across the street from this. We have Death Child. We've dealt with a few renters coming in and out. They don't stay long. 
I'm under the understanding that these are a thousand dollars a month for what they're renting them for and how many people stay that long <laughs> so I've seen a lot of the little rent things going on in and out a lot of changing of hands people not mowing not taking their trash off so it, I'm definitely against it <laughs> I've been there 30 years, and I do not want the value of my home to go down now that Blanchard's going up. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ms. Covey. Is there any, anybody have any questions for Ms. Covey? All right. Thank you very much, and thank you, too. <laughs> right. Is there anyone else here to speak in opposition to this application? Bear with me. Joan Catcher, 7834 Womack, Shreveport, LA, 71107. Okay, I'm against this also because people speed down the road, and with these trailers coming in, there's going to be even more speeders down, speeders down the road. And, and like I say, I walk my dogs every morning, and I have to get off of the road when everybody comes goes to work or comes home. So, like I say, I'm, I'm against it. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, short and sweet. All right, well, thank you. Um, no questions for her. <laughs> Anyone else here to speak in opposition to this application? Chris Manea, 4179 Oak Lane. Um, I've been down at the end of that street uh, for about 13 years now. Um, I've had three children that go through that elementary school, and I've got one, another one that's fixing to start going at elementary school. The elementary school bus stops right across right on that corner so is the middle school and the high school so depending on what starts coming in there or what's allowed to rent in there which is usually in and out we don't know what where, where we're going to put our kids and then two is my my home value you know I drive by a trailer it's a trailer park you can throw a baseball from one to the other no matter how you want to put it it's a trailer park or a manufactured park thank you all right thank you right. any questions Miles Grissett, I live at 4370 Acorn Circle, 71107. I've lived in the neighborhood for 45 years. The present zoning configuration has served us quite well. I can see no reason to change it. I can see several reasons not to change it. We are served by a neighborhood well. It furnishes a good adequate water supply, but like any single entity, it has its limits. So any increase in density of population will adversely affect that. Uh, each, each particular residence has its own septic system. And I do know that several years ago, the property just south of me barely passed this parish's his percolation requirement for a septic system. So I assume this is probably endemic to the neighborhood. So continuously adding septic system with the increase in, in density of population will certainly affect the, the quantity of life. Now, I know it's hard to quantify the quality of life. That's why we have a commission. Thank you much. Thank you very much. Well spoken. Well, anyone have any questions? Anyone else here to speak in opposition? <laughs> My name is Darlene Methvin. I live at 5972 Acorn Street, Shreveport, Welcome. Louisiana, 71107. Um, my property is adjacent, the property that's in, or not adjacent. You uh, can point to it if you want it's the, on the screen. Oh, okay. This property right here. Okay. And it's an acre. This, this property right here is, a, is an acre. And all three of those trailers are in the front part of my acre um, so there's no way that they're divided in acre properties they are parallel maybe I don't know 50 feet apart between two trailers and then another one maybe 60 feet that's running perpendicular and um, so the I don't see how they can say they're dividing them in acre lots because they're already in there 
and they're in probably less than three quarters of an acre area that they've got these trailers positioned. Um, and I just don't, I oppose it, strongly oppose it for property value, for the riffraff that we've seen that you have already heard about the, when we've had the other trailers on the other acre street which have been made to um, be moved and evacuated because they did not meet the RA um, requirements that um, they, we got lots of riffraff, lots of um, police calls, um, people walking the streets all hours of the night, people passing off drugs where cars would stop. You know, it's on a circle, the, the back part of the, you can't see it on this plot, but that back back there um, where it says RA, that big part um, is, a, is a wooded lot. And the, or I'm sorry, the, this part here is a wooded lot. All of this is wooded. And so it's very secluded, very um, country living. And the, the people would come in there and that's where they would pass off the drugs, either back behind those woods or in there's a dip in the road on Akron Street. And they would pass in that. And they would just sit there and wait. And sometimes this would be, you know, occurring not far from my house. And so I just really oppose it. And I feel like it doesn't do anybody or any good. It doesn't do any good for our neighborhood. It only benefits the person that has purchased this property. And he did clean up and remodel this one trailer that was on there and make it a nice trailer. And then all of a sudden here he comes in and moves more trailers on. But he doesn't live there. Is so he's the only one to gain benefit by making this change. So I ask y'all, please don't, don't, don't um, bring our neighborhood down because it's a. As you can see, you've heard people have lived there. I've been here for 24 years. You, people have been in this. They they come in. They live here. It's their area. So we ask y'all right. protect it for us. Thank, Thank you. you for speaking. Anyone have any questions for her? Yeah. All right, anyone else here to speak in opposition to this application? All right, the applicant, uh, Ms. Griggs, would you want to come back and you have an opportunity to rebut if you'd like? There you are. Thank you. Um, try to, there's a lot of misinformation that was given just now. I'm just going to try to go through the basic points that are pertinent to this. Um, Number one, I do live in the area. Actually, we live right here and have for three and a half years. It's a very nice area. We bought this home, gutted it, remodeled it, and sold it to improve the area. We have rentals all over. Um, it's not a trailer park. It's a mobile home subdivision. We're talking about three lots, one, two, three larger than the lots directly across the street. The main thing is I want to be clear for the record that we did not move in the trailers after we got a zoning violation. They, we moved in the trailers with the thought that we owned three lots, we could have three homes and didn't realize we were in an RA. We didn't realize we were in the district of the MPC. And as soon as we got the zoning violation notice, we stopped all activity. The cosmetic things have been continued just to make it not an eyesore during this interim, which could be several months. And if this is denied and we have to move the trailers, we still own them and we'll move them to other lots. And so they will still be used. Um, the septic claim that something was done illegally, we had to expand our septic system. That's not anything unusual. Uh, we can't vouch for the existing neighbors. We can't help that there are already rentals in the, in the area. There are rentals everywhere, all over. Um, our tenants, we screen heavily. We do, we require trash pickup as part of their rent. We require yard maintenance. Um, it's nothing like the Lawler group that they talked about. We're very strict on our renters and make sure that they comply with our lease or they have to move. Um, we build wood fences between all of our properties from the street. 
what they'll see is a driveway and wood fences. They won't, once it's complete, if we're approved and we get to subdivide, they won't see trailers. All they'll see is driveways and fences. Um, we're familiar with the use standards of the Unified Development Code. We do this for a living. We're not trying to get in trouble with the MPC. We try to comply with everything. We make, we improve properties all over Shreveport. We improve streets. We improved our street. We improved the neighborhood. <laughs> we spend a lot of money, a lot of money in this town. Um, saying that they have renters coming in and out. I'm not sure what happened with the Lawlers. Our renters stay for a long time, several years mostly, one to two, three years. Um, the water supply claim is just invalid. No, no utilities are hooked up on those trailers that are there. No, nothing has been affected. There, there is an alternate water company that we can use. If we, if we get to that point with the utilities and the, the division, then we'll decide if we use the water company there or the one that's just right in this area. And all the division of our one lot into three smaller lots, if you drive around the neighborhood, it's a small neighborhood, it's, it's nothing different than what is already there. And I guess that's my main point. Thank you. Is there any questions? Yes. Oh, Mr. Clark. We're, we're trying to work ourselves through a board of chair uh, that if these are actual planted lots, lots 22, 23, and 24, yes. uh, we don't have that information at our disposal. And as you can notice on the vicinity map, all we're showing is just one track of land. So I don't know where they obtained the information that these were three separate lots. It's on, I mean, our deed, it's three separate lots. I have them drawn out on my map if you want me to show you. The division, you can see, it's kind of, it's crude, but you can <coughs> see that how those are the three lots that we purchased. Now we, we, we would like to see uh, when these lots were actually subdivided into <coughs> three separate lots. Uh, uh, they, it was, this is part yeah, of the original subdivision, subdivision plat. plat, which was in the 1970s when the subdivision was created. There were three lots. <coughs> I have a copy of the plat. I don't have it printed, but I do have it on my phone. And they, um, I believe the subdivision was created, if my history is correct, in the late 60s and the early 70s. And, and you have uh, documentation showing the subdivision and the three lots. It's if you if you pull up the Pine Hills Park unit number two, I'm not sure if I can pull up my phone. I can show you the subdivision plat. I have a copy of it on my phone. I don't know if it'll show on the screen. Yes. So, while she's doing that, if in fact they, just for hypothetically, if they were already subdivided, <coughs> and she doesn't need this zoning change, correct? That is a possibility, and that that's what we're that trying to. To make a determination, we may request for you to give us a little additional time to verify this. And maybe Monta Sweeney can maybe Monta Sweeney can make this larger. There's the 22, 23, and 24. These were these lots were created individual and our issue is and the reason for the resubdivision is when it was made RA and the original home was put on the property. That's the the original home is right here. It goes across two lots cut that way. And so originally we wanted to subdivide so we could have use of the entire track of all three lots that we bought. But since it, if it was this way, then we could, you know, we wouldn't have an issue. But it's, it cuts across and it's not in our nature to remove existing structures because we, you know, we fix them, they're stable, okay. they're fixed, they have porches, we have tents, we have a lot of things going on. <coughs> So in order for it to fit what you're trying to do is the reason that you're here for yes. the resubdivision. Yes, because the um, the MHS would allow us to put the, a manufactured home or a modular home, or if my understanding with my <coughs> conversations with Mr. Pallant are correct, 
we could actually build small houses on the lots in the future if we wanted to. Right. Okay, I just, I just want to make sure I'm, it's clear. You're saying right now the, one of the structures yes. spans across lot 22 and 23. Yes, it fits in right there. Okay, so you would have to resubdivide these lots to get three lots if you're approved. Yes, okay. and, and that would be our next step in which yes. we were we were under the impression that mo normally you do this at the same time, but we wanted to make sure we got through the, the zoning step first and then we will apply for resubdivision. And this house that is already there is not a, is not a manufacturer's home. It no, is. It is? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the, there are... Most most of the homes around are manufactured homes, and that's kind of our point in asking for the rezoning. Is that it's not going to change the dynamics of the neighborhood. It's just re but this, this one, our but this life. one is anchored. This one is anchored. I, I mean, I'm looking at the Google Map and that house that yes, I you think see, you're talking about is yes, anchored. that house has been there since the um, the original owner bought the property. It's been there for almost 40 years. The other pictures that we saw were homes that were not anchored. Were no, those okay. are those are those were the new ones before we realized that we were in RA, <coughs> and then we they are not fixed to the if, ground at all. If you get the approval, will you anchor those homes? Are they going to be anchored? They're going to be yes, and we do. They have um, they have pads under them already, but they will be immobilized. Yes, which is what they call when they put a manufactured home on a, on a property. that from all appearances that appears to be a legal subdivision of a property. Now the problem is, it is that the structure is across lot lines. Uh, and uh, we'll have to move the structure. that's a solvable problem without they necessarily the they, if they move rezoning the entire, you know, because the rezone but, is a big deal. But I feel like that that was placed there in, I mean, it's RA, and so you, I think that's why the whole, and as you can see on your map, it shows as one large piece that is RA. But if it's subdivided, you, you, she could just move the structure and put two other ones there, right? And then it No, because it's RA, and RA, you can only have one mobile home well, per acre. Lot. Right. Yeah. If I'm that, correct. That's a problem. Right. That's uh, a problem. The lots are non-conforming because they're not an acre. But did they not pre? Are they not pre? Um, is this not? They're not grandfathered in, so to speak. Just, just like, non-conforming. But the other lots on the right are also they under appear to be non-conforming lots uh, because the there is a subdivision, it and it was. It appears to have been done legally. We don't seem to have that it, that that subdivision in our records, but it appears to have been done legally, and that makes them non-conforming. But now. Since it's a non-conforming RA, three lots, we may have some further issues. Would the staff like to defer and look at it? That's that was, that's, that was that's my thought. Right. Right. Okay. Sounds we do good. not have we do not have adequate information to make recommendations well, to you. Yeah, because we want to be board. fair with both sides right. to be sure that. Correct. But we will take note of everything that was stated here before, so they don't have to come back. Right. And the, the subdivision plat is recorded in the courthouse. It's a it's a regular recordation, Pine Hills Unit Number Two. Yeah, nice we get the, uh, the you said it's recorded as Pine Hill. It's um. Yep. Yeah, it's the legal name of the subdivision is Pine Hills Park Unit Number Two. Pine Hill Park Unit. Number and that um, those three lots. There, some of them in the notification area are in a d different subdivision. This property is Pine Hills Park Unit Number Two. Okay. And the um, the three lots have stayed together since the creation of the subdivision. One individual bought them. He put the mobile home on the three lots, and it's been that way until we purchased it from their family three years ago. What? All right. 
Nancy. All yeah. right, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate that input. And um, if, if you will, I'd make that motion. Uh, yes, um, board, what is your pleasure? I'm, I move to defer. Right. Second. A motion to defer by Mr. Um, Curtis R. Joseph Jr. <laughs> <laughs> by Mr. Curtis R. Joseph Jr. And discussion. Second by Mr. Dis Ronald Ramirez. Discussion. Any discussion? Yes. Okay, Mr. Uh, right now, there are some pending litigation due to nonconformance. Is that right? Not so much litigation. There's just some confusion. Okay. Well, I guess my point is, Alan, I just don't want to keep sending them letters since we're deferring it to get it straight. Let's just don't send them any more letters saying you're nonconforming until we come back and meet again. We're not going to send any letters. Right. Uh, and I can control that. Uh, That's right. That's what I just want, you know. <laughs> be kindly slapping them around a little bit if we <laughs> defer it and we send them another letter next week saying they're non -conforming. No, sir, we, we won't send them any letters uh, for the 30 days that's being deferred until you make a determination. All right. Call for the vote. Yeah. All right. Call for the vote. And the vote is on the motion to defer until we can get a more reliable information. And that right motion um, passes, so this will be deferred until until further notice. Nicholas, all right. Thanks you all for being here. Um, I can't see. All right. Next case, uh, number P ten nineteen, special use permit and site plan. The applicant is Warren Associates. <coughs> Andy Craig, Moore and Associates, 1324 Welcome. North Market, Suite 301, Suite 47107. This is not a mobile home subdivision. Thank not you. <laughs> Y'all have probably seen this track before. It's been before you a couple of times. Uh, the developers, the owners, uh, initially were planning to put in a uh, uh, storage, uh, climate control storage, if I remember right. We weren't involved in that case. and. Uh, they dropped that project and decided to try to do RV pro, uh, storage, RV and, and boat storage, and uh, then some competition moved in that area. They decided it was, that was not feasible, so uh, they've decided that uh, what they might could do is uh, build a couple of <coughs> contractors' offices, and uh, so they're starting out with just two of them on the south, uh, the north one acre there. Um, I'll be glad to answer any questions. And, and this is zone C3 that requires special use permit for the contractor's office. They're thinking you know, electrician, plumber, or something like that. It's just a small shop with an office in it. And uh, just two of them for now. All right. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Any questions for Mr. Craig from the board? Seeing none, thank you very much. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this application? Anyone here to speak? In opposition? All right, board, what is your pleasure? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Second. Mr. Ramirez. Can we, can we can you yes. do that with the stipulation? Oh, with the stipulation. Motion to oh, approve. Yeah. Second. With the staff stipulations, it's written. <coughs> and second by Mr. Jackson. Is that correct? All right, any discussion? Oh, Call for the vote. <coughs> All right, and that application is approved. Thank you. All right, we've already done the next case in the lineup, so we will move on to case number C3619 and also P1219, which is the UDC uh, text amendments. Um, the applicant is the MPC. Um, Mr. Bailey, would anybody like to? I discussed these at lunch. Uh, everyone was there, but Mr. Ramides, I can go over them again, unless your pleasure is for me to just open it up for questions. Um, uh, I know y'all are always. Board, what is your pleasure? Would you like to discuss or? Hurry up before you. I get started. I think this needs to be a long discussion. We get this hammered out right. <laughs> Just saying, if we started at one, we'd been gone by now. That's it. Every 30, they say. Oh, 
We'll continue to curate. <laughs> um, board? Uh, we uh, move to approve. Move to approve. Okay. <laughs> Motion to approve. Motion to approve the text amendments by Mr. Um, Joseph and the second by Ms. DeMarteau. <coughs> Any discussion? Nope. Call for the <laughs> <laughs> if you did, didn't you, you, you didn't, did you? You didn't. You didn't. You can't read. Mr. Yeah. He is. Yeah. He didn't. No, he didn't. Oh, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Smith is just old. Here, honey. Yes. Okay. I'm going to take you to a trip. Let's have some dinner. All right. All right. All right. So those amendments have been approved to be recommended. Um, let's see. The next item on the agenda is not really a case, but it's. This item was added at your last meeting. Yes, it was asked to be on. It was put yeah, on the agenda at the last to meeting. Add this, and I'll share with you why. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you were really, if I'm on the correct one, <coughs> extend the. Uh, the uh, period of time Two more years. where for another year where <coughs> persons can come in when their property was down so as a result of the UDC you did this uh, uh, August the 2nd of 2017 yes and it expires <coughs> August 2019 you may feel that that is ample time and no additional time is needed uh, we just wanted to place this before you to to allow you the opportunity in the event that property owners are still out there, that their property was down zone as a result of the Unified Development Code, can come back and go through the same process that property owners have been going through <coughs> since August 29, 2017. Uh, yes, Mr. Jackson. <coughs> uh, in light of what uh, Mr. Um, Clark has said, I'd like to move that we would um, extend the MPC policy concerning property down zoning by uh, the UDC an additional calendar year and no longer. I second. Okay, and I do have a discussion issue. Are we, can we do that? Yeah. I just want to ask, I mean, are we also, would this also mean it's free of charge for them? Like yeah, same policy. But, yeah, yeah. Same uh, policy. If, if we didn't vote on this, they could still apply to be rezoned. They, they just could couldn't apply. do it as a matter of right. And have to pay. Right. For the rezoning. So this is just a courtesy? It's I just guess. an extended courtesy that uh, <coughs> it, may, it was evidently by the, the number of applicants that came in and voiced uh, this desire that we may not have notified as well as we thought we were notified. And there may still be some property owners out there that would be negatively impacted okay. by those decisions. But after another calendar year, uh, we believe that that would have been more than adequate time uh, to allow property owners to come back in and, and apply for the restoration of their zoning classification. All right, thank you. All right, so the motion is to approve this request. Yes, my, yeah, my motion was to extend the MPC policy concerning property down zone by the UDC for an additional year only. So, second. A second by Mr. Andrews. <coughs> motion by Mr. Jackson, second by Mr. Andrews. All right, call for the vote. Oh, no. I didn't press yes. This thing must not be working. <laughs> it says yes. You got it. You got it. Where did they get it? Restaurant. Brought up in demand by the horse. I mean, seriously. Put one in couples. All right, that ends. That's the end of our public hearing. Um, we need an update on our committees, right? I guess we do. We, call up. we have a. I know we have a master plan committee meeting tomorrow, so we are not right for that yet. But any other committee updates? We had updates? one last week, didn't we? Adam, two weeks ago, mass plan? Last, last, last month. month. Huh? Last month. <clears throat> last month. Did you give us an update on that one? Uh, I, I, I can. Okay. Uh, the uh, committee did not uh, vote a, for a chair. Um, uh, at the time, a quorum was not complete. 
Uh, by the end of the meeting it was, but then they uh, opted to postpone it for a month. Uh, we discussed the master plan uh, update, uh, presented that to the parish at their last meeting. Um, they asked for, to me to represent that next month, so I'll be doing that next month. Um, we went over the UDC amendments, uh, both in the parish and the city. Um, and we discussed the um, uh, citizen advisory group by kickstarting that up by requesting names. And that's limited to 30 people on a citizen advisory? There is no limit as oh. far as I know. We're just asking for names from the uh, current com uh, board members right now. Right. Thank you. It's tomorrow at, at noon. Lunch is provided for update. <laughs> Mr. President, Chair, you. Let's go. What's next? Any other committee reports? Um. Any new business research? Who has No report at this time. Okay. All right. Other matters to be reviewed? The director's report? Real, real, real quickly with uh, the director's report, are you there? Yes. Uh, as uh, Adam has said, the master plan subcommittee meets in tomorrow. Uh, we have begun to have movement with the parish commission on the adoption of the amendments. They uh, recommend it. Uh, quite a few uh, uh, amendments to 14 to be exact to for that meeting Thursday to move the, that meeting Thursday so they're showing movement and in that regard they're becoming very receptive to become bringing the uh, UDC in line with uh, the city's UDC uh, as you all know the APA National Conference will will begin uh, April 12th and we will be leaving the city going to that conference is in San Francisco. Uh, there are a couple of staff members and a couple of board members that will be in attendance. Uh, we've met with the billboard industry. Some of you had interest in the billboard industry and their concerns. Uh, we are not at an impasse, but uh, we have decided to uh, not recommend any changes to the care uh, ordinance. Uh, there's just one point of of discussion is, is how measurements are done. We whittled down the uh, confusion, the uh, disagreements down to that, whether it's done linearly or, or radially, and we're going to meet back in a month's time to talk about that more. Uh, the only company that, that has any real value in these discussions is uh, Lamar, uh, because they own probably 90% of the billboards in the city of Shreveport and the other uh, entrances into the uh, market are perfectly happy uh, with the number of billboards that they have and the possibilities that they can have. The only concern they have is location. And that, that's the discussion about how big <coughs> it is. We should have uh, neighborhood and community planners on staff by hopefully May 1st. We had two persons that had accepted uh, the offers, uh, and we'd gone through the process of uh, setting all of the new employment uh, requirements and putting all those things in place and getting everything in, in order for this young lady. And she, at the last moment, she decided to decline the the offer, and uh, so we've had to extend the period of uh, interviewing. Uh, we're interviewing another applicant uh, Friday, if I'm not mistaken. And, she was one that we did not interview, and we had three other, two other applicants that uh, were in the finals that we will also consider uh, once the, we interview this third applicant. The zoning administrator uh, applications are ongoing. I think we've had a, probably about 20 applicants uh, for the zoning administrator position. We have some excellent persons that uh, that are applying both in-house and around the country. So we will be shortly beginning the interviews for the zoning administrator position and hope to have a zoning administrator hired at the very latest by the end of May 1st of June. And right. that's all I have. All right. Real Thank quickly. You. 
Mr. Director? <laughs> I believe we've reached the end of our agenda unless there's some board member comments that anyone wants to One make. One small comment. Yes, sir. Since y'all don't have a whole lot to do. <laughs> Very little. <laughs> At some point in time, I'd love to talk to you about, remind you about some of the, the opportunity of putting together this is what has happened with this for maybe okay. once every six months. So okay. this is what is happening <laughs> in Shreveport to let people know either through the media, ra radio, television, the last six months, this subdivision has gone in, this company has opened up, or this restaurant, or something like that, because we're doing it. But we're not getting any credit for it cause, just because people don't see it in the media. That's, thank you. Yes, and, and, it goes and along just, with Just to be quickly respond back right. to that, that's why we are employing these very ver <coughs> well versed planners. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Gene once we get back tomorrow to uh, assign some planners to do that and we will have that for you hopefully at the next meeting. If we could, I've, always, I've been saying this forever, but if we could get a little editorial in the paper every few months, I've been asked, I've been, I think that would be very helpful. Well, you're chair, you can demand. So, I have been trying. We're trying also uh, because I, I get a chance to attend a lot of different governmental meetings and Governments are making extremely good use of Facebook and uh, Twitter and some of these other uh, social medias. And we have been trying to get some articles uh, uh, on Facebook and Twitter and uh, whatever the other one is. Uh, and we're going to hopefully start doing that. That's part of what these new planners are going to be equipped to do and make sure that information is getting out because a lot of good things are happening. Uh, with the MPC, when a lot of bad <coughs> things were happening, we were all over the news yes. media. But yes, now that uh, a lot of good things are happening, you never hear anything about yes. us. And we can change that. We Which is good to a certain part, but uh, right we need we need we need to toot our horn yes. because we really turn things around. That's true. We should be real proud. I just of think it helps that. for good public conversation, for people to be positive, and I know that's one of the things the council's trying to improve. is just the way that we talk about our own city. Um, instead of being negative, they're trying to lift up the, the um, discussion. Absolutely. Get it. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm adjourned. Mm -hmm. Second? Second. All right. I'm Thank you, everyone. Sort of. So now this is a bougie program. Have you heard anything? Yeah.